This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. Welcome, 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 everybody. I have a very special live stream for you this evening. I saw the news drop and I hadn't had time to prepare anything, so I figured why not just go live and we'll go over these documents together in kind of a legal education hangout where we talk about big cats, big grumpy cats maybe, um, and we talk about Tiger King and Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin. Now, I don't know everything, so we're mostly going to be focusing on what happened today. There, there are several court cases and hundreds of docket entries, and it costs, I don't know, we, we spent like 50 or $75 pulling all the different documents. Um, I was going to make a video about all of the legal shenaniganery around Joe Exotics. He, he, he was what? He was in Florida, had a tiger farm sanctuary zoo in Florida, and then got into the whole thing with Carol Baskin, and then agreed to some judgment. I think it was like a million dollars or something, and then moved to Oklahoma, tried to hide all of his assets. And, you know, when people people call lawyers a lot and, and they go, oh, I'm being sued. How do I hide my assets? And it's like, well, wait a second. You can't always do that. So we're going to see some of what happened here. And uh, she, Carol Baskin, followed him to Oklahoma, legally speaking, had the Florida judgments brought to Oklahoma, had the Oklahoma court recognize them, fought even further over uh with Joe Exotic and all that over the properties and things in Oklahoma. And then just today, we finally get this judgment uh, in favor of Big Cat Rescue Corp, which is Carol Baskin's company, against Shirley M. Schreibvogel, who I think is Joe Exotic's mother, deceased mother, late mother, and the Greater Wynwood Development Group, and of course, Joe Exotic is in jail right now. He's in prison, so uh, he's not... I mean, he can respond to these things as much as, I guess, he can respond to things. I mean, you don't, you know, just being in prison doesn't mean you can't respond to court documents. But uh, you'll see here what the judge has to say. So there's a six-page judgment, and there's an 11-page order. The order is the more interesting part, so we're going to do that second. And the judgment will help us get there. So... I don't have a whole lot more detail than what I just described. So we're just along for the ride. And uh, please accept my apologies that I don't have all the details. I think Legal Eagle did their, did his own, uh, Devin did, did, did his own full analysis of all the shenaniganery surrounding Joe Exotic's lawsuits and all that. The, the basics of what I understand happened is he was upset with Carol Baskin and he appropriated, or should we say misappropriated, the name of her sanctuary, Big, Big Cat Rescue. And then she sued him for copyright and trademark infringement. And he agreed to a judgment of like a million dollars or something like that, a stipulated judgment. And then he never paid that. And then all this shenaniganery happened. And now she followed him to Oklahoma. So let's take a look. In accordance with the court's orders entered August 29th, 2019 and June 1st, 2020, a judgment is entered as follows in favor of plaintiff Big Cat Rescue Corp and against defendant Greater Wynwood Development Group. The court incorporates and merges herein its agreed judgment and permanent injunction previously entered pursuant to the federal civil procedure, etc. Judgment is entered in favor of Big Cat Rescue on the claims that asserted by and against uh, GWDG in the amended complaint unless otherwise provided herein or in the court's orders. A constructive trust. Well, first off, let's maybe back up. Uh, judgment is going to be a default judgment, so we'll go over that too. And then they're going to go over a constructive trust. Well, that's a, that's a weird one. Um, so in this case the property that has been won is still physically possessed by defendants, you know, Joe Exotic or 
Greater Wynwood Development Group. So now the court is saying, well, they don't own that property anymore, but they still possess it. So what is that? And the judge is going to call it a constructive trust. The no longer property owner, GWDG, is now holding the property in trust. We are trusting them with the property to hold on to it until it can be successfully transferred. And so that is a trust that we are constructing out of thin air, and that is called a constructive trust. So a constructive trust is imposed in favor of plaintiff Big Cat Rescue as of February 20th, 2015. As to the real property described, uh, it is 16.439 acres of land located in Garvin County, Oklahoma, together with any improvements thereon since February 20th, 2015. More specifically, and this is how, if you ever wondered how deeds to property are written, um, this is a little bit of weird legal language, but let's go over it. So this is, this is how a parcel of property is quartered off. The Northwest Quarter of the Southwest Quarter of the Southwest Quarter, NW4, SW4, SW4, of Section 21, Township 2 North, Range 1 East, of the IBM and the North 165 feet, of the East 500 feet, of the West 1460 feet, of the North half of the South half of the Southwest Quarter, of the West 300 feet, and the West 300 feet, of the northeast quarter, of the southwest quarter, of the southwest quarter, and the west 300 feet of the northeast quarter, and of the southwest quarter, of the southwest quarter, all in section 21, township 2 north, range 1, east IBM, Garvin County, Oklahoma, containing 16.439 acres, more or less. And so for simplicity, we'll just call that the zoo land. Should have just started with that, right? Uh, thank you, Paul Holt, for the Australian $4, and thank you, Dreamer Don, for the two U.S. dollars. Really appreciate it. This constructive trust shall follow the zoo land and any and all improvements and fixtures. What are fixtures? We're not talking about lighting fixtures. We're talking about, like, permanent improvements on the land. So, you know, you put a boiler in your house or something. That's a fixture. Whether such improvements or fixtures are fixed to or have been severed from the zoo land after February 20th, 2015, through any and all transfers of title subsequent to that date, free and clear of all liens unrecorded as of the date of this judgment. Three, a constructive trust is imposed in favor of Big Cat Rescue as to the following vehicles, their proceeds, or the proceeds of any insurance. A 2014 blue Ford F-150 crew cab half-ton pickup. A Ram 3500, a GMC Sierra 2500, a Ram 3500. Wow, those are those are big heavy trucks. Uh, as of the date of the purchase, up to thirty thousand dollars each. The constructive trust shall survive any physical or title transfer of the vehicle. So if they've been sold or something, then you can get you can claw back. They call it. You can claw back the uh, the proceeds of the sale. A constructive trust is imposed in favor of Big Cat Rescue on the following portable buildings, their proceeds or the proceeds of any insurance. A 12 by 36 cabin, a 12 by 36 cabin, a 12 by, four, 12 by 40 lofted porch cabin, a 12 by 20 utility building, each valued up to $20,000 each. Okay. And a money judgment is awarded against... GWDG and the amount of the gain resulting to GWDG from its use of the zoo land. So just from having the land since approximately February 15th, 2016, I guess, uh, then that means that uh, GWDG owes Big Cat Rescue for the use of that land. Let's see. Equal to the rent they were entitled to receive from the zoo lands lease which was 4166 per month $4166 per month or about $50,000 a year and post judgment interest and they want that from February 15th of 2016 it looks like
And let's see, I'm a little confused here. Uh, so it says that the money judgment is the gain resulting from its use of the zoo land from and under the lease contract entered into February 15th, 2016 to the date of this judgment and then also rent from after the judgment is what it looks like. They shall collect and pay monthly the sum of 4166. There you go until it's transferred. Six, Big Cat Rescue is granted liens, equitable liens against GWDG in the value of its buildings, effective as of the date defendant Shirley M. Schreibvogel first executed financing or lease purchase contracts for each of the vehicles. So that means those vehicles can now no longer be sold without those liens being satisfied, as in paid. GWDG shall produce an accounting of its business records from its inception to the present, including all bank statements, check copies, monthly profit and loss. Uh, thank you, Gunnar Johansson, for the advocate membership. Uh, statements and balance sheets, bookkeeping entries, receipts for expenses, QuickBooks reports within 14 days and such accounting shall be produced to the Big Cat Rescue Council after the 15th day of every month until fully paid. Title to the zoo is recognized as transferred to a new LLC effective as of the date of service of this judgment. Title to the zoo land shall here be here shall be and hereby is confirmed in this uh, new LLC. GWDG shall within 14 days notify Big Cat Rescue's Council of the location of its buildings and vehicles. If the buildings and vehicles have been transferred, disposed of, or destroyed, GWDG shall provide Big Cat Rescue's Council the date of the transfer, the disposal, destruction, an accounting of the proceeds, an identification of the transferee, so the recipient, if any, and the current location of the property or its proceeds within 14 days and GWDG is permanently enjoined from concealing, transferring, encumbering, liquidating, destroying, or disposing of zoo land, including fixtures, uh, real or personal property addressed in this order, any and all business records related to the company, any right or claim they have, including to the Greater Windward Exotic Animal Park, Windwood, Greater Windwood Exotic Animal Park, whether such right is claimed through an operating agreement or otherwise, and any assets or business operations, they shall provide a copy of this judgment and the court's order to any servants, agents, employees, so employees have to see this as well. And Big Cat Rescue is awarded this nominal $5,000 uh, accordance with the taxation of costs. So I'm assuming that's because this judgment wasn't entered for some time. So then, what happens next is the court issues an order in line with this, uh, with these previous judgment that we just read. And so the plaintiff, Big Cat Rescue and defendant, uh, plaintiff Big Cat Rescue sued defendant Shirley Schreibvogel and Greater Winwood Development Group. Big Cat Rescue and Schreibvogel reached a settlement and the court entered judgment as to their claims against Schreibvogel, no issues remain for the court's resolution against Schreibvogel. Uh, the court previously grant, granted GWDG leave to withdraw from uh, the council, so attorneys leave to withdraw from representation in the case and warned that it had to obtain new counsel within 30 days because as a business it could not represent itself. No new counsel have appeared. Accordingly, Big Cat Rescue filed a motion for default judgment against the Greater Winwood Development Group. They did not respond. The court issued a show cause order why a default judgment should not be entered. So, so show cause why a default judgment should not be ordered or uh, entered. As to Big Cat Rescue's claims against GWDG, therein the court expressly warned GWDG that a possible result of their failure to obtain new counsel would be entry of default judgment on Big Cat Rescue's claims. 
Pursuant to the court's instructions, GWDG's former counsel forwarded the court's order by D GW order to, uh, they forwarded the court's order to GWDG by mail, email, certified mail, and it appears that they received direct notice. They did not respond to the court's show cause order, and new counsel has still not appeared. Pursuant to Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 16F1, the court entered default judgment against them and indicated, I'm just going to call them Winwood. is that okay? Entered default judgment against Winwood and indicated its intention to issue the default judgment because Winwood fi willfully failed to comply with the court's order regarding securing replacement counsel, as well as its other failures to obey or respond to the court's orders in this case. Big Cat Rescue sought attorney's fees. Thereafter, the court conducted a hearing regarding the amount of damages and other remedies to be awarded to Big Cat Rescue against Winwood, pursuant to the court's default judgment decision, as well as regarding their attorney's fees requests. No counsel for or representative of Winwood appeared at the hearing. The court finds that Winwood's amended answer to Big Cat Rescue's amended complaint should be stricken as a result of their default, and the court finds that the well-pled factual allegations in Big Cat Rescue's amended complaint are deemed admitted by Winwood. The admission by Winwood of such allegations supports judgment on all of plaintiff's claims against Winwood unless otherwise indicated herein. In light of such allegations, the court finds that Ms. Schreibvogel acted in concert with Winwood and others to fraudulently transfer, there it is, fraudulently transfer certain real and personal property of and belonging to one or more of Big Cat Rescue's judgment debtors, including Joseph Allen Schreibvogel, uh, now known as Joseph Maldonado Passage, GW Exotic Animal Memorial Foundation, the Gerald Wayne Interactive Zoological Foundation. These are known collectively as the judgment debtors. So they are in debt because of the judgment. Um, so what is so what is this thing about fraudulent transfers? Can't you just transfer your funds away? If somebody sues me, can't I just give my money to my wife and then no one can obtain any money from me? No, that's not how that works. Certainly it can mess things up. Like it can make it harder for the attorneys to, to get at the money because it's not you, it's not in your bank account anymore or whatever. They can't go to your wife's bank account and just get it. But, uh, you know, so it adds some steps, but you could also be charged with some kind of fraud or the, the court might hit you with extra fees and costs because you are actually actually not supposed to transfer your assets away in anticipation of losing a court case or losing a claim. That's considered a fraudulent transfer. Um, the coolest or best example I've ever seen of this was one where I represented someone in bankruptcy who had gotten divorced and in the divorce had you know, prior to ever being in contact with me, had signed their divorce papers and signed all their rights away, basically. So they had gotten divorced and they hadn't gotten the, you know, approximately half of the assets that a spouse is supposed to get in, in a divorce. Basically, you're supposed to split the marital assets right down the middle. And what it qualifies as marital assets will be a little bit of a fight sometimes. But you know, once you know what the actual marital assets are, the rest is easy. You're supposed to split it right down the middle. So we go to bankruptcy court for this poor woman who, like literally poor woman, had to declare bankruptcy, who um, hadn't received any marital assets. And so the bankruptcy trustee, upon seeing that she hadn't received any marital assets, immediately clawed back uh, money from the the ex-husband who had not given the wife anything in the divorce. And so we were able to get her debts paid by the bankruptcy trustee starting an adversarial action against the, the husband's assets. So you can't just fraudulently transfer money away. In, the, in that case, he was fraudulently keeping money that she needed, but uh, you just can't you can't just fraudulently uh, transfer money away. No consideration was received by Ms. Schreibvogel or Winwood for the fraudulent transfers of real or personal property at issue in this action, as set out in the amended complaint. And the transfers are fraudulent as to Big Cat Rescue under Oklahoma statutes, Title 24, etc. 
The real property fraudulently transferred to Wynwood included the 16 acres, more or less, of land located in Garvin County, Oklahoma, together with any improvements thereon. From May 31st, 1999 to the date of this judgment, referred to herein as the zoo land. The two quitclaim deeds, as recorded in real property records of Garvin County, so a quick claim would be we're going to we're going to transfer everything that we have, and there's no warranties or guarantees or anything like that. Uh, were fraudulent transfers as to Big Cat Records? They were sham deeds. They are void. At the time the sham deeds were executed, Wynwood and other transferees of the zoo land had knowledge of Big Cat Rescue's judgments and therefore were not good faith transferees of the zoo land. Accordingly, Wynwood's title to the zoo land is void and Big Cat Rescue is granted a constructive trust over the zoo land from and after February 20th, 2015. Further, Ms. Schreibvogel executed a quick claim deed September 21st, 2018 to the LLC. The court determines that Wynwood's title to the zoo land is void and that title should be vested in that same LLC based on Big Cat Rescue's request for the same. As the sham deeds are void, title to the zoo land was vested in Shirley M. Schreibvogel when she ex executed the deed naming the LLC as grantee, and title to the zoo land is therefore transferred to uh, that LLC by that deed, effective as of that date of this order and the judgment issue. So I think the judge is just going over those deeds were correct. Uh, thank you to Zach C. So if you default after responding, the court can ignore your response and treat it as if you admitted everything. Um, if, yeah, I guess if the, the, I don't have the exact procedure in this case, but the procedure we just read above was that, yes, the, the court struck the answer to the amended complaint since the, uh, sort of as a sanction for not obeying the court's order to get new representation. Since it's an LLC, they don't get the same rights as pro se litigants do. Um, LLCs need to be represented by a lawyer. And I'm not even sure if they can be represented by their principal. In other words, the person who owns or operates the LLC. I think they need their own lawyer. So that's a, that's a thing about, about this. And so the sanction for not responding to the judge's order to get a new attorney, I think that's what did them in and why the judge struck as in removed from the docket. Uh, it's on the docket, but it's ordered struck. So it doesn't, doesn't count anymore. So it's as if they didn't respond. Yes, and thank you for the $5. And Toys are for Boys, Canadian 666. I hope you're happy and healthy. Any news on the fiance? I hope you can see her soon. Here's a bit to help. Thank you very much. Uh, fiance and I are doing okay. We are probably not going to be able to get married on our wedding day. And uh, we're upset about that, but you know, we'll live. Being upset doesn't help anybody. So we're just trying to take it in stride. <laughs> Let's see here. Title to the zoo land shall be and hereby is confirmed in that LLC. The court finds that no lesser remedy than those imposed herein will be effective as to the Wynwood company uh, based on the facts and procedural histories of the parties dispute both in this case and a different case because its title is void Wynwood does not have the right to occupy or use the zoo land nor does it have the right to lease the zoo land to a third party under the guise of its void title to the zoo land and itself holding itself out as the owner Wynwood has since February 15th of 2016 purported to lease part or all of the zoo land to the greater Wynwood exotic animal park LLC to operate an exotic animal park the lease states that Wynwood Exotic Animal Park compensates Wynwood Group for the use of the land in the amount of $50,000 per year or $41.66 per month. The court finds the lease payment terms to be reasonable as a valuation of the use of the zoo land under the constructive trust being imposed in favor of Big Cat Rescue because Wynwood or against Wynwood as further described herein. In addition, Based on the court's previous entry of default judgment or judgment against Ms. Schreibvogel, right, she agreed to the judgment, any right, title, or interest 
Wynwood Group may claim in the following vehicles, their proceeds or their proceeds of any insurance, those claims are void as to Wynwood. And there's the trucks, the half ton pickup, the Ford F-150, the Ram 3500, the GMC Sierra 2500, and the Dodge Ram 3500. Uh, the court finds that Big Cat Rescue should be awarded judgment against Wynwood in the form of a constructive trust, an equitable lien in, on, and to the vehicles, their proceeds, and the proceeds of any insurance from the vehicles from the date of the respective purchase of each vehicle as set out above. Uh, let's see, Big Cat also seeks a constructive trust over certain trailers that are used as housing for zoo park employees Big Cat has not addressed any tenant issues that could arise from such a remedy accordingly, except to the extent such trailers are otherwise included in the remedies afforded by this order and the judgment being issued herewith, the court denies the request related to the trailers. The court finds that Big Cat Rescue and the material submitted to the court has sufficiently traced funds to allow for the imposition of a constructive trust under Oklahoma law. Big Cat Rescue's constructive trust and equitable lien in and to the vehicle shall survive any physical or title transfer of the vehicles and shall follow any proceeds except as to a good faith purchaser for value. So someone who was innocent and who received one of the vehicles, I, they get to keep the vehicle. But... Uh, if someone should have known or did know that they were committing a fraudulent transfer, then that can get clawed back and that person is reachable. In addition, based on the court's previous entry of judgment against Tribe Vogel, any right in the portable buildings is void. So there's the portable buildings, the 12 by 36 cabins, the 12 by 40 utility or, or lofted porch cabin building, the 12 by 20 utility building the titles are void. When the contracts were executed by Ms. Schreibvogel, the buildings may have been structures that required further building out when delivered to the zoo land. Big Cat Rescue's constructive trust and equitable lien granted in the buildings includes and extends to any fixtures, additions, build outs, or other accoutrement added to the buildings after execution of the contracts from the date such items were added to the buildings. The court finds that Big Cat Rescue should be awarded judgment against Wynwood in the form of a constructive trust and equitable lien on the buildings from the date of their respective purchase of each building as set out here. The court further finds that Big Cat Rescue in the materials submitted to the court and in this action and in the other case has sufficiently traced funds to allow for the imposition of a constructive trust. The trust shall survive except as to a good faith purchaser. Finally, the court considers a, an award of attorney's fees, whether that should be imposed against Wynwood as requested by Big Cat Rescue. Big Cat Rescue asks for such an award because it would not have incurred the expenses of attorney's fees absent Wynwood's willing participation in the fraudulent transfers, but the authority in Big, Cat's res Big Cat Rescue's request could only support an award of attorney's fees based on Wynwood's wrongful actions and failing to comply with the court's orders not based on the wrongful actions as being fraudulent transfers. In addition, the court finds that attorney's fees are not appropriate in this case based on the sole reason for an award of attorney's fees identified by Big Cat Rescue because Big Cat Rescue's counsel would have been required to take actions for which the Big Cat's uh, seeks attorney's fees in order for them to reach its ultimate objectives in litigation regardless of whether they complied with the court's orders. Further, the court finds that the default judgment being awarded in this case and the substantial remedies being afforded to Big Cat Rescue are sufficient in the instant circumstance, such that exercise of the court's inherent powers to award attorney's fees are not necessary. So Carol Baskin does not get her attorney's fees paid for. She owes all the money for attorney's fees and only gets what is left of the land and the buildings and the trucks that's probably not going to be enough to cover it. I've seen there's several cases. There were a couple Florida cases. There were a couple Oklahoma cases bringing the Florida cases to Oklahoma. There were a couple Oklahoma type judgments. There were there were several dockets that were over 100 items long and one docket that was over 400 items long. There's going to be massive attorney's fees for all of that. I don't think any of this property actually covers her attorney's fees. Just off the top of my head. 
Conclusion. It is therefore ordered that the attorney's fees motion is denied. The amended answer, the Winwood answer, is stricken as a result of their default. So stricken as a result of their default. The A separate judgment shall issue. We read that first. To effectuate the equitable relief, the injunction awarded in this case, a Winwood shall vacate the premises of the zoo land within 120 days of the date of service of this order, with uh, which vacation of premises shall also require removal of all zoo animals from the zoo land. So the zoo animals must be removed as well. Shall take all steps reasonably necessary to require its purported tenant, Greater Winwood Exotic Animal Park LLC, to vacate the zoo land within 120 days, which includes removing zoo animals. Shall within 14 days obtain and maintain general liability insurance on the zoo land, providing insurance of $5 million per occurrence with a deductible of $5,000, naming both Big Cat Rescue and the LLC as additional insureds which policy shall remain in place until Wynwood vacates the zoo land, and with respect to which a certificate of insurance shall be delivered to council within 14 days of this order, shall execute any documents reasonably necessary to indemnify Big Cat Rescue and the LLC for any damage or liability arising out of their uh, uh, Wynwood's ownership interest of the zoo land, including but not limited to liability for any injuries to anyone on the property, including any, uh, including but not limited to liability for any injuries to any person. So if there were ever any injuries, uh, Wynwood has to indemnify or, or cover for those injuries or any future claims from those past injuries. Uh, shall collect from Wynwood Animal Park and pay the sum of forty one sixty six so forty that four thousand one hundred and sixty six dollars per month payable on the first calendar day of each month for use of the zoo land until such time as Winwood completely vacates the zoo land premises and that payment begins July first. So I guess maybe if they could leave by July first, they don't owe it. I don't know. Shall notify the court within fourteen days of the date of this order that oh, within 14 days of the date that Zooland has been completely vacated, I'm just going to start calling it Zooland, uh, by Wynwood, including the removal of all zoo animals. Wynwood shall take all actions required by the judgment being entered contemporaneously, so that, pre that previous judgment also is part of the order. And prior counsel shall forward this order and the accompanying judgment to Wynwood and shall file a notice with the court indicating their forwarding of the same. And this requirement does not alleviate Big Cat Rescue from other service obligations. So yeah, boom. You ever wonder what it looks like when they take your farm? Well, <laughs> they came and took the zoo. <laughs> so, so, you know, oh, they're gonna take my house away. Yeah, this is what it took. All those lawsuits for years in Florida, transferring all that stuff to, uh, to Oklahoma, pursuing it all in Oklahoma for years and probably hundreds of thousands of dollars in attorney's fees. And then finally winning this only in 2020, you know, four or five years later, and they're going to get what's left over. So now you see why a lot of judgments, um, including like credit card debt and stuff like that really isn't worth that much money. Um, do you remember the, the, the housing financial crisis um, when it turned out that some of those loans were really junk loans and they were worth just pennies in the dollar? That's the same kind of thing. Um, when it actually comes to collecting the money, it might be way harder to do it than you'd think. So there's a discount for having to go through all that unpaid effort to collect on the debt. And so sometimes judgments or debts are sold or, or worth 20, 30 cents on the dollar, even less. You, you might you might literally buy, you know, $100,000 worth of debt for $20,000 or less, and then hope that you can collect more than what you paid in the process. And you don't get paid anything extra. You just you, you get what you're able to collect. That's the that's the game for debt collectors. Uh, Andrew Cruz, thank you for the two dollars Canadian. There can only be one Zoolander. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there were there were no male models harmed in the making of this uh, of this video. I promise. So, what do you think of that? Let me know in the comments below. This is the last day of May. I know, I know. It's the first day of June. 
but because of the way Patreon and Sponsus and our other platforms charge our supporters on the first of the month, we don't actually know who our supporters are until the second of the month. So I'm going to do my outro with the May supporters. The May supporters are, cr are crawling on the LED panel. So thank you very much to the May supporters. The June supporters will start your uh, description and crawl and, and, and recognition tomorrow. So thank you very much. Michael DeHaven, thank you for the $4. When, if, can Carol force the current owners off? Um, we, I think we just saw that at the end here. I think it's 120 days. So within 120 days of the date of service of this order, they must vacate and provide proof of said vacation. So they're going to take a vacation. There you go. So that's our show, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. This is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news and education program here on YouTube. This is a community supported legal education channel that would not exist without your financial support on a monthly basis. Thank you to the following $50 plus supporters in May across our several support platforms. Joe Tyson, Wes Delge, Nicely Done Defense, Video Remonetized, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Spirit Bear, Jan de Grey, Michael Pierce, Daniel Perez, Blackleaf, Benjamin Hightoff, Stephen, Ada, Cute Grills in Your Area, Longreach Jones, Zachary Cheney, Mullen PC, Ugly Grill, Shiloh T, Josh Baker, Gregory, and Rudolph Besherer Jr. Thank you very much to Dreamer Don for the uh, the bye bye wave, uh, bye bye Dreamer Don for your and thank you for the three dollars. So and the five dollar excuse me plus supporters are scrolling on the LED panel behind me. I'm gonna keep it short for you. Have a good night. Love you all. I'll see you in the videos that drop. Uh, next one's gonna be our the Running Man Fortnite lawsuit. It started out as copyright, but then it became trademark and unfair competition and unjust enrichment and then it came back to copyright so that's going to be fun we'll drop that tomorrow as soon as i have the supporters list figured out for june 2nd there you go all right love you all bye this is a community supported legal education channel find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below